And we are wrestling with AEW Full Gear 2022 Review. Uh, it took place uh, last Saturday um, in New York, New Jersey at the Prudential Center, uh, 12,106 uh, in attendance. Oh, this show. Interesting uh, concept, interesting um, everything. I don't know if it was just, I wasn't in the mood to watch this, but I've been into this this show not really wanting to watch it with every fiber of my being. Um, and kind of that feeling never really went away the entirety of the show. Uh, there was nothing really that made me really enjoy it or turn my opinion to, oh, this is actually really good. And the matches, it just seemed like the Young Bucks had produced every single match because it was just false finish after false finish after false finish after false finish after false finish. Every single match, it was so repetitive. Um, that's how I felt about the show as a whole. Um, what say you, Felicia? Uh, I mean, I watched it with an open mind, and this, but the one thing I always say is like, I think they need to get better with the 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 stories and the why and telling it in the ring because sometimes those false finishes like I could say this I could make an argument the best story going into this pay-per-view was Luchasaurus versus <laughs> Chuckle Boy right because it was actually built on something right right I mean it was just a personal beef yeah it was just like a personal beef um, everything else was kind of like, I feel like everything on the men's side, as far as like the trios champ, the trios championship and the AEW championship were literally the result of what happened with CM Punk. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of like a fallout of them having to make shift what the hell they were planning to do anyway. And it kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that. I give them the grace for because I mean no one expected all that shit to go down, right? Oh <laughs> uh, yes, so, no. So so they did the best they could with that point because everyone kind of knew that MJF was going to get the belt. It was just a matter of off of who, right? And it was supposed to be off Punk and not Moxley. Oh. Thus, all this other shit popping off. We'll get into all that um, in a moment. Um, Drew fucking uh, uh, pre-show matches. I'm not gonna talk about those because um, I don't watch the pre-show. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, a four-hour show made five hours with a pre-show. Yeah, no. I mean, at least New Japan give you a halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody talks shit about those shows, but I'm like, at least New Japan be like, yo, halftime, go go get what you need to get done. Get, get a drink, go to the bathroom. Get a drink, go to the bathroom, get some stretching, <laughs> yoga, whatever the fuck, but go away and come back for a second. The, clean, uh, the ring will be clean when you come back. Exactly. Streamers oh. will be cl- cut. <laughs> The first match um, on the actual card, Jungle Boy Jack Perry defeated Luchasaurus in a steel in a solid steel cage match by submission in 18 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, just felt like there was a lot of unnecessary steps to get to the end, and the ending. I mean, you could have he could have came just came off the the top of the cage and pinned them, but. For some apparent reason, he had to make him tap out. Uh, just small things like that just don't make sense to me. Other than that, um, okay, match. 
Uh, Jungle Boy finally got his comeuppance. What's a you, Scooter? Oh, Calico. I know. I, I, I understand. I understand. I understand, James. I'm like Casper. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the only thing that threw me off from this was it's a steel cage match, but they ended up outside when that meant Luchasaurus won because he was out the cage first. I mean, that's the mindset that I have. <laughs> Do you, you, you feel me? Am I the only one? Because no, if that was the case, people you... have said, uh, oh, oh, that the match is over. And I was like, no, AEW doesn't do, um, it's only by some pinfall and submission. They don't have uh, escape the cage rule. Which is stupid because that's the whole point of the cage. Anyway, okay. What's the point of the cage? You might as well just call it Hell in the Cell. I mean, it's big enough to be a Hell in a Cell. Yeah, it might, it might as well just say H I Hell in a Cell. Um, yeah, I mean, it was good for Perry to get the win. I, it wasn't believe. I mean, the fact that he did that dive and he couldn't break him through the table kind of like show he need to put some weight on his ass. But other than that, you know. <laughs> I can't, I can't knock them. How many stars do you give this one? Uh, three because of the story. The story actually made sense, right? Give that, it, I give it two I give, because... I give it three just because it's the story. The story itself was probably the most yeah. sensible story they had in the, in the paper. Right. There's, there's, there's no... Oh, debating. The story was probably the best story that they had going into the show. Um, but just everything around the story just didn't make sense to me. Um, so that's why I give it um, two and a, a half two. stars. Got it. Alright. Um, Death Triangle. Uh, the Bastard Pack Pick. Penta L Zero Middle and Ray Phoenix uh, defeated the Elite Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks uh, to retain the six man tag team championships uh, in 18 minutes and 40 seconds. Well, not retain, it's match one of the seven match fuck CM Punk tour. That's what <laughs> I think this is it. I swear to God, that's why I think it is. I think it is the match one of the fuck CM Punk tour. Well, I was getting to that. <laughs> but at the, at the moment of the, of the match, it was just <laughs> was a step triangle. Oh. No, the, it's the moment they said best of seven, I'm like, oh, they're taking this shit on tour. Yeah. <laughs> Wait so, a basically... <laughs> I thought the, I was actually genuinely surprised of the match because I thought I thought you know, there was no way the elite wasn't going to win the match and then they did it. Um but that being said, um how many times have we seen the Young Bucks versus Panther and Ray? So I mean it was just another match in their even longer feud now. Dude, because that's, yeah, it just, that should span. I feel like the Bucks and them are kind of like the new Hatfield and McCoys of wrestling. Because it's like they fight every freaking time. Uh, basically, the Usos and uh, New Day at this point. True, but, it, but I feel like even the Usos and New Day don't even get this much. Shit. Well, I mean, they haven't had a best of seven. They had a best of 107. I mean, I believe it, they're on that level when it turns to a rap battle. Then I holla. <laughs> okay. But I feel like that would that would have to involve the acclaimed in some way. And then, yeah, and then it's all kind of fuckery there. But let's... Yeah. <laughs> oh... Moving on, like you, like you said, uh, this is the CM Punk Fuck You Tour because um, the three trios titles was what started all of this with CM Punk anyway. Um, 
week, uh, the the second match in the series did play, take place in Chicago, uh, and the Bucks and Kenny were, um, not gracious to the Chicago's fans, um, very much trolling oh. them. I told you it. Th- that's why it was a seven-part tour. <laughs> they taking that shit from Jersey to Chicago, back to Florida, all over. What's not in California? Because you got, because you got, because CM Punk's polarizing now. It's like one crowd's like fuck them, and you know they weren't gonna say fuck them in Chicago. Chicago's gonna have it back regardless. Right, and. You could tell the Bucks are working the crowd to it, so. But, uh, isn't it a little poor taste to, um, cost somebody their job and then troll them afterwards? Um, how did they say? AEW didn't screw CM Punk. CM Punk screwed CM Punk. <laughs> CM Punk screwed CM Punk. He became the thing he hated. So I'm wondering if he's sitting at home thinking, you know what? Vince was right. Triple H was right. Because you know what pisses me off all about it? Every every one of us was like, Triple H, you're fucking wrong. And now all of a sudden we're like, motherfucker, he knew. <laughs> That's when it hits you. He knew. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh. Next. Uh. Oh. Uh, how many stars do you give this one? Uh, three, because I've seen it fifteen million times. They just added Pac and and Omega. Very true. <laughs> um. Two and a half. Honestly. And I only give it a two and a half because uh, that triangle won, and I did not expect it. Really? Yeah. They're down to zip. So, you know how this goes. They're going to come back and storm <laughs> like Normandy with those wins. <laughs> I mean, again, you didn't know that it was a best of seven series until afterwards. Hey, man. It's about the it, they're down to zip. They're about to come back like fucking LeBron in the twenty sixteen finals. Boy, they about to boy had to be in the zone on that ass. <laughs> Straight up. Jay Cargill uh, defeated um Nyla Rose uh to retain the NBC championship in uh, eight minutes. The NBC <laughs> CBS? The TBS, the TBS championship tells you how much I care. <laughs> oh gosh, what Al Roker's got a title now? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, honestly, five minutes too long. What say you? Honestly, the only thing that the best thing about this match was after the match because for some odd reason. Uh, Jay decided to try to go to a Bow Wow concert <laughs> and got kicked out. So you have to be some kind of a prick to get kicked out of a Bow Wow concert. So that tells you everything you need to know <laughs> right, right there. Are you saying you that this big is a heel in your mind because of uh, Bow Wow? I think she's a face because of Bow Wow. <laughs> Because ain't nobody trying to pop off with Bow Wow right now. 106 in Park was like two decades ago, homie. <laughs> How many uh, stores did you get this one? Uh, two. I'll give it one. Damn. I'm more gracious. See, I come back gracious. See? <laughs> <sighs> I'm just jaded. <laughs> I see what you did there. All right, um, we got uh, the Nacho or uh, Cisco retaining uh, the Ring of Honor World Championship against Brian Danielson 
Uh, Claudio Itacanoli and Sammy Govara in 21 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, yeah. Expected? Yeah. The match on the card. Ex- ex- expected? I mean, I can't say really anything more about it other than it, it happened. It was okay. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. It was, it happened. It was okay. That, that's the perfect next. <laughs> how, many, how many stars? I give it three. Th- three, because they just kept playing the whole, they're it, all in each other same clicks, but they'll backstab each other for the title type deal, which. If that would only work if there was actually any dissension or breakup cause of it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So there's that. Right. Um, Soraya defeated Dr. Britt Baker DMD in 12 minutes and 30 seconds. Me and Where to start? Were like, Where to start? <laughs> Chris Baker doesn't win this match. It just makes her look like absolute complete garbage. Because you Why? were the face of the company until a WWE girl came okay. and took your place. <clears throat> and that's exactly what happened. Why didn't we say that with Hangman Page and CM Punk? Um, because. <laughs> I, he, I mean, as much as CM Punk came from WWE, he wasn't necessarily a WWE guy. He was gone for seven years. There was black blood between the companies. It's, it's kind of um, apples and oranges to a degree. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. It's a lot more similar than most people think. But my thing is, is that. <clears throat> Britt Baker is already set, right? That, that's why, because why wouldn't it be Sor- uh, Soraya versus, what's the difference between her getting over on a Nyla Rose or a Jade Cargill or goddamn Kiara Hogan, a, 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 a Sheeta. But, Hey. But I think that she didn't. I mean, she don't need it. I gotta get in the shower. True, but I mean, Brett is does not a lot of things that can hurt Brett Baker by winning a champ. Oh, there's not a lot of things that can hurt her going into a match. But I felt like this really just hurt her to say. Okay, well, you were a girl, you would face the company. Oh, and here's Tony's new toy, and he wants you to lose to her. And that's kind of what I have my reservations about it. Uh, I, I, I just, the only reason I disagree is because Brit, Brit's the face of the division, and that doesn't change it. I mean, that don't change it by I, I put, it, put it this way. Do you think Brits less than Nyla? Yeah. Who was the champion walking okay. the match? I mean no. But Do you think so 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 my thing is this if she is dropping, who how far is that drop? Is it a drop to Kiara Hogan status, or is it a drop to? Because to make, because here's the thing: Hater won the belt. She's closer to the belt, just as close to the belt now as she was when she was the champion. True, and I mean that is the obviously the most logical point to go next is Hater Breakoff. I feel like they're going to play it out a little bit more, a little longer than we had anticipated. Right. So, 
to me, I think because to I I get what everyone's saying. She's rusty and she probably blew up the first three minutes in the match. Blah 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 blah. blah. But my thing is this. <clears throat> I mean, we haven't even got to the match yet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we haven't talked about the let, match yet. Let's not. Um, <laughs> because cause it, cause people thought this match was going to be the match of the year. And I'm like, dude, she hasn't wrestled in like years. What do you expect? Um, it, wasn't so, C- it wasn't CM Punk versus Darby Allin. And even then, you had some points where it was like, what the hell, right? I mean, yeah, but I mean, Dobby was is is and only was at that point just a pillar of AEW, and I mean, he was a smaller guy to get. You kind of he kind of gets exposure and gets put over because he wrestled CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Britt Baker was already at that point in the division. She didn't need more. Exposure. She was so, and to that degree, it's kind of apples and oranges to me. My, I get that point, but I think Brit is the gatekeeper of the division, right? So, like, if if you can't hang with her, how are you gonna hang? If you can't hang with the best, then how are you gonna hang with everybody else, right? Because if Soraya came back and lost to Sheeta, would anybody kind of be like, oh, uh, you know, right? Would, would it be different if she had to came back and beat Sheeta? Would that thought still be the same? Maybe Sheeta could have carried her to a better match. If, well, if I'm being honest. And God damn. <laughs> It could have given Sheila that rub that she kind of needs because I mean even though she she was champion at one point they haven't done a lot with her and she could definitely use a little bit more exposure than for Baker. Uh, so then the question would be why Brit? Because because. It, it wouldn't make sense for Sarai to come back to fight. I mean, I, I get it. Like, Britt pulled it out of her, right? As much as we had to say, she, for better or for worse, dramatically pulled out the 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 will for Sarai to want to wrestle in the first place. Who, who else on that roster could have done that? Um, I mean, if we're getting repetitive here... Tony, Athena, but Athena is she hurts people. Let's be honest. Um, I mean, Statlander is injured. Anna J can't. <laughs> That's um, what I'm saying. Like, who else would it been? It would have been Thunder Rose is gone till February at least. I mean, if they remember so, that she works still, Mercedes Martinez. Uh, nah. I mean, if and if you really want to give for you know a proper match, <clears throat> if somebody is going to actually put her over properly and make sure that she's protected, Serena T would have been the best choice. But isn't Serena still the? No, she's not. She's no longer the NWA Women's Title. But but Serena, it it wouldn't have garnered the emotional investment. I don't know. Right? It because just, honestly... This match because, just hits me the wrong way in every possible way. <laughs> I, I, I can see it. I just am playing the advocate of what other person that would be opposite of Soraya, where the crowd would actually be emotionally invested into the match. Cool. And that is what it was all about. Because Soraya versus Serena, yeah, they would have been protecting her, but no one would have mattered. You know what I mean? The outcome would have been predictable. And this, 
the outcome of this match was it? It was. I wouldn't say it wasn't, but you would understand why Britt would win. Sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, how many how many stars do you give this one? Uh, can we just skip the stars part? <laughs> Um, uh, I would say a two and a half. It only because it's five years. It's I, I can't give it a five, but I can't say it was average. It was it was rusty, but that's what you expect. You expect it not to be this classic, right? I give it one and a half. Jesus, man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I feel like I feel like I'm the black guy on America's Got Talent <laughs> or something. America, what was that song? Uh, Randy Jackson. There you go. I feel like I'm Randy Jackson. I just console everybody. Oh, everybody gets good start. <laughs> so Samoa Joe defeated Wardlow and Powerhouse Hop in um, a three way for the eight, uh, AEW TNT Championship for nine minutes and 55 seconds um another one of those matches i did not see coming um not a bad match i love samoa joe but did samoa joe really need to be samoa two belts uh Calico. yeah that's what threw me off but i think it was just to get hobbs out the way and have a a showdown for Joe and Wardlow. Um, Because I think, don't get me wrong, Pops took the pin. So, therefore, he's out of it. So now it's Wardlow going, hey, you beat them, him, you didn't beat me. So that's where it's going. Does Wardlow actually benefit from a rivalry with Samoa Joe? Wardlow will get better on the mic because of Samoa Joe. Um, yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, let, let's face it. I, I, I love Samoa Joe. Um, he's in the twilight of his career right now. I'm shocked that he's still actively wrestling as we speak. Um, what? So, I mean, and then you have him beat... I mean, honestly, two guys that could have benefited from beating a Samoa Joe, and then just have Samoa Joe beat them. But it was the way that Joe won. He hit, he just straight up knocked niggas with the belt, which goes to show, hey, I ain't hanging with you niggas. I'm going to hit you with, use the smarts. So that's what he did. All right. Experience is the best teacher. True. All right. Uh, how many stars do you give this one? Three. I think we're finally on the same page. All right, um, Sting and Darby Allen defeated Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal by Pinfall. Next, n- next, just, just, just next, <laughs> just next, damn it, just, just next, just, just next. Actually, I just didn't think it was that bad of that bad of Next, one. next. Jamie next. Hader defeated Tony Storm to win the Interim <laughs> Women's Championship in um 15 minutes um interest definitely an interesting match to say the least um hero cheated her ass off in this match and yep. the crowd still loved her for it um, yeah which is a weird thing to see <clears throat> and honestly one of if the if not one of the, the, the best matches on the card, one of the better matches on the card for sure. What are you, Kalika? Yes, but I think, like we were saying earlier, I think 
desperate knowing that she couldn't get an I think she's she's not that highly ranked on the title scene. So the best place to be when you're not the champion is next to the champion. <laughs> so so that's I think she was doing it. I think eventually it's gonna show that she's doing it from a, a selfish place. Um Tony, it's weird because Tony was the interim and they didn't give her the official title as champion, but Hater wins the interim and now she's the official title of champion. Uh, but that's a whole nother thing. Uh, it, the, the match made sense, right? I mean, Storm was just getting cheated left and right. So I'm expecting a goddamn rematch eventually. Right. Right. But the question is, is that rematch going to happen? And what's going to happen with Thunder Rosa when she comes back? It's a lot of variables with the division now. Well, let's get into that for a moment. Is Thunder Rosa coming back? Because she's the only interim champion to actually be stripped of the title. Um, I, I feel, I, and I love Thunder Rosa. I've always been a fan of hers. Um, she did not need to be, they did not need to give her the championship to hold on and do an interim champion. She needed to be stripped. Just like Cody needed to be stripped at that time. Just when CM Punk needed to be stripped. And actually was afterwards of the title. Uh, mm-hmm. It need the interim thing needs to die, honestly. What I, I understand. Here's my take on it. I understand the reasoning for the interim because of the fact because it it kind of gives it the sport feel, right? In the sense where, hey, if a person is injured, and and it happens in. UFC. I'm a UFC dude. I watch UFC. So when a guy's injured in UFC, he really can't defend the belt. You know, the division still has to go on even without them, right? I just didn't think if they were going to do that, they should have did it in the beginning, right? Um but we don't know what happened. Maybe she was planning on coming back and there was a setback on the injury. You just don't know those things, but you can't go. Yes. We're going to have an interim title and then strip the actual champion. That's what throws me off because you can't go. Well, she's relinquishing the belt because you know, the, no, you, you if you're going to stick with it, stick with the interim title. Now with punk, that's a whole goddamn hot mess that that happened but for everyone else that had an interim belt and the champion eventually came back and they had the undisputed match it was no different right they did it with the tnt belt they did it with the aw belt it's no different so that's my thing the inconsistencies of it is what makes me mad because if you're going to have the interim, you might as well ride the whole interim out until Thunder Rosa comes back. Because that's what you've been doing the whole time. So what makes her different? And that's to me, is the thought process. Do you, uh... Uh, what was I going to ask? It just seems... Uh, and keep in mind that Tony Storm, her brain is not all the time that she was champion for however long, I think it was like three, four months. Um, it's null and void. She wasn't. She's not going to be considered champion during that time. So I'm, yes, she would. She would. Is she? I would think so. Because it's otherwise not made legitimate other, because she didn't. She was only intro. But. Uh, but the fact that but the fact that they allowed her to defend the belt sh- showed that they recognized her as a champion, right? Oh, 
and that's and, and that's where and that's where I was like, what the hell? Because you you can't say, well, she was interim champion and it didn't count. So it counts because of the simple fact that she actually defended the belt. Had she lost, they would have been like former champion, right? You know what? So I that's have no idea. <laughs> And, that, and that's the point. She was the champion. It, in the books, they have her as the champion. So, All right. there you go. Fair enough. How many, st- uh, how many stars do you give this one? <sighs> Two, because they were cheating like shit. It just got to the point where it just took it out the match. <laughs> shit. I give it three and a half. Because really? Who won? Who was supposed to win? Won, and it was. It kind of seems like the right way to do this. It Aye, makes sense. But it, yeah, but god damn, it was just. They took if you wasn't cheating, you ain't trying to a whole different level. I um, the acclaim defeated Swerve and All Glory. Uh. To retain the AEW World Tag Team Championships in 19 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, I feel like this is way, this rivalry was way too played out. Too many matches. Nobody really cared about Swerve and Lee as challengers. Um, and finally, we got the the Keith Lee. 12 Strickland tension, they're going into a rivalry stick. So, yeah, it was all right. I mean, I think this was probably the best match that they've had out of the three. What say you? Yeah, the best match, but the problem is, is that the, the acclaimed is so over. It just. It, it, it doesn't make sense. It was so over that it was just kind of, you know, um, it's just way, they're just too over. I think, it, I think it was just meant to cement that Swerve and Our Glory is indeed breaking up, right? Right. I think, I think that was more of what this match was meant to do, more so than to put the acclaim over because they already are over. I mean, couldn't have they done that in a, a TV match and then have a pay preview match against people like we legitimately think could actually take the titles from the acclaimed? No, because all the tag teams are kind of busy right now. And when I say all the tag teams, mainly FTR is busy, right? <laughs> so, yeah. That's why. Because here's my thing. If the acclaimed had moved on and it was FTR, who do you think was in that match? Yeah. And that's why. (laughs) (laughs) And that's why the match happened. How many stars did you give this one? Four, because it was the better match. I'll and it did what it was, and and it did what it was supposed to do. I'll stay at the three and a half. All right, um, and then the last match, the main event, MJF defeated John Moxley, uh, to become the new AEW World Champion in twenty three minutes and fifteen seconds. Um, honestly, I'm happy John Moxley gets his vacation now. Really? Because I don't think he is. <laughs> um, I mean, why would MJF win the title if John Moxley wasn't taking a little bit of a break? Because to me, I think MJF was gonna was going to be the champion no matter who was across from him. So you think this was the plan in, right off the gate of when he came back in um, September? Yes. 
But what does that really say about Tony Khan? That this guy literally did not want to perform for him. Held the company up for ransom to leave. Left. And he and then he only came back because he gave him more money in a title. And uh, Tony Khan allowed that. That's the that's the business, baby. It, that decision became easier when Punk did what he did. <laughs> but I mean, he would have made that he, deal. It was he, before all the shit before the happened. before the show happened. Yes, and and my thing is this: that may have been prolonged, but it just made it necessity because of what happened after that. <laughs> Because I think Punk was going to lose. Either way, Punk was going to lose that belt. It was just a matter of who. To who? And and everyone kind of figured it was going to be MJF. MJF Punk too. And and this time MJF got the better of him. I don't know. Does uh, does MJF as champ? Do you believe MJF as champion? I believe him just as much as I believe the Miz's first championship, which is going to be that he's going to do everything out of his ass not to defend the belt. And then when he defends the belt, he's going to cheat his way to win the belt. That's why they put Regal with him. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with the whole Regal, Moxley, Brian, Blackpool Club, whatever the fuck they call themselves, fall out. But the only way that MJF actually stays champion for longer than, let's say, 30 days is if he has someone who is a wise man to him and is willing to help him conquer every challenge that he has. Do you think uh, uh, William Winkle is staying? Because it didn't seem like um, they were drawing him out of AEW on Wednesday. Well, we got to figure out what what the hell MJF's going to say. Because I here's my thing with MJF. He'll talk you into the building, but then the bell rings. Yep. No no offense to him cuz he he can get you in. But the way he's the way him compared to everyone else, do you really think he could credibly beat people on his own? Given the fact that literally his whole time in AEW has literally been him getting over on people with the help of other people. Very true. So that's where, and that's why I said, Earlier with the Austin Theory thing, you need to change the way you think about him. It, the belt is not going to change. Him having the title is not going to change the way how I thought how he was since day one. All right. So uh, how uh, how many stars do you give this one? Three, because it was predictable. <laughs> And and it's because I mean MJF can work. I just you know. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um the pay preview as a whole. Dumps Thumb in the middle. Down, dumps in the middle. The mid the middle. Literally the middle. Cause it had its good moments. It has its okay moments, and it had its what-the-fuck moments. So, um, best three matches in no particular order for me as far as storyline. Um, the tag match. Um, the Well, yeah, the tag match. Um, the Jungle Boy match. And the Soraya match, surprisingly, because all those made sense. All those made sense from what was happening going into it, right? Everything else was just a result of 
circumstances that happened prior. Okay. So, story wise, yeah, Jungle Boy and uh, Luchasaurus basically. Um, yeah. And um, I put kind of four data on Storm um, because that's something we've been waiting for, and then obviously everybody loves to be playing. Yeah. The only reason I don't think Hater, because I think it should have been Hater beating Thunder Rosa, and that would have been the catalyst to start. You see what I'm saying? Right. Because it, it would have made sense to... For, if that was Thunder Rosa, it would have made every sense for what Brick Baker did to help Jamie win the belt. You see what I'm saying? What? That's the only reason, like, it's... Yeah. Well, I mean, Hater's obviously not going to get the uh, take in either two because of uh, Thunder Rosa, but, um, I mean, at some point it might happen, depending on how long this one goes. Well, put it this way, I hope it goes until when she comes back, and then if Hater beats Thunder, then we can have a thrill discussion with her and Britt. I, I give it a thumbs in the middle as well. Um, probably never going to come go back and say, oh, this happened on the show. Um, it just kind of happened. Pretty much. All right. Um, that will conclude um, our coverage of AEW for here and um, this episode as a whole. Um, if you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, or on YouTube and Obviously, thank you for listening. Uh, join us this Tuesday as we interview uh, Yaka Rally the Don, um, and this Wednesday as we interview Marcello Squirrel, uh, the owner of uh, Capital Championship Wrestling. Um, uh, follow the show at Wrestling with Eva on Twitter and Instagram. Um, on uh, Twitter, um, who were information on who were interviewing them? Um, uh, links to those interviews and a whole lot more. You can follow me closely at JC93. Uh, where can we find Kaliko? At I am Kaliko for however as long Twitter is up because I think that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> it's got to 100 oh, followers. I can't believe Twitter. Uh, it sh- the way the way Elon popping out, he trying to be the Suge Knight of Twitter. Anyway, All right, uh, and you can follow Scooter at Scooter Dust and uh, on the remix, the only live alternative commentary for uh, WWE PLEs, uh, and on the um, Smoking Dragon uh, uh, Twitch stream. Alright, um, for Calico Yacht and Scooter Dust, I'm James Shea, and this has been a last one Entertainment. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside. Hey guys, this is Brutal Bob Evans from Hangs with Bob Seminars and TheWrestleLife.com, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world.